praise God. Oh, for grace, oh, for strength to be able to trust to more, praise God. Well, at this time, praise God, our preacher, praise God, of the hour, praise God, is going to come and bless us with the word of God. Bless us, praise God, with the mind and the thoughts of God to bring us, praise God, to that victorious place where we walk, praise God, in him. And we're confident, praise God, that there is no God like our God, praise the Lord. Immediately following the preacher, praise God, will be Deacon Charles Carter. But coming at this particular time will be for our associate pastor, that is um, at this time in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Thank you, Bishop, for that thumbs up. Praise the Lord, everybody. And thank you, Pastor Boone, for uh, bringing us into our service, along with all of our announcements from Evangelist Way. We are just so glad to be back on our broadcast. Amen. After missing uh, a week of our service, we are just grateful to be here once again, uh, where we can come and fellowship and listen to beautiful singing like we just heard from Evangelist White in that powerful, powerful song. Amen. We just thank God. We give honor to God this evening. Again, as our, our sister pastor has alluded to, uh, to our Bishop Robinson, Lady Robinson, amen, to uh, Pastor Boone and her family, amen, and to Pastor Burden, Lady Sharonda, amen, and to, uh, I believe, uh, do I see her on tonight? Amen, amen, the word pastor from Atlantic City, I don't know, but we say praise the Lord to our district elder, amen, to my uh, lovely wife, Missionary Melody, to everybody that has joined in tonight uh, to hear a word from the Lord. Well, I'm just so grateful that we have this opportunity, and even right now, Father, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy, and your loving kindness, hallelujah, amen, and your peace that surpasses all understanding, oh God, bless us with the word this evening, and will bless your people, strengthen them, oh God, and give them strength to run on as never before, in Jesus' name, amen, praise the Lord, amen, as uh, Pastor Boone was saying, and uh, Evangelist White alluded to, we are coming to a close uh, on these couple of months where we've been dealing with the healthy church. Wow, we've heard some powerful, powerful teachings and preachings. Amen. And I'm quite sure that as, as you have followed along and as you have joined in these teachings during these past couple of months, I'm quite sure you have learned something. And even maybe you got part of the healthy church uh, within your bones enough to join that healthy walk. Amen. That's just in the cold set up, amen, to where you got your steps in, amen. So we say keep on stepping in the name of Jesus. And we are just so grateful for the, the culmination of this theme concerning the healthy church, which was found in the book of uh, Third John, uh, verses uh, 1 and 2nd verse. It says, we love our wish above all things, above all things, that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. What a powerful, powerful scripture that we've been dealing with. And we've had so many themes. Can you think about, think back about all the things that we've had in the past, just the past year up to now? Praise the Lord. And these themes which are inspired, I believe, quite certainly by the Lord through our bishop for our church and the body of Christ where we take these themes and we dwell on them. And even though this theme is coming to an end, it is not coming to an end because we will always need to uh, keep these themes uh, working in our lives. So yes, we will always be the healthy church, not just because it comes to an end and we go to a new, a new theme. No, no, we will always strive to be the healthy church and doing those things which God commands us to do. I was thinking, as we, uh, as I said, this theme is coming to a close. I was thinking, uh, as this being the last of this theme on our broadcast for now, that what is one of the things that cause us not to be healthy in our lives and also pertaining to the church or the body of Christ, 
praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor Burden gave a very good teaching not that long ago concerning the health attitudes and the things we must do mentally, praise the Lord, and how we must guard certain aspects in our lives in order to mentally stay healthy, which does affect our health, praise the Lord, as many of us can attest to. And then the word stress uh, popped into my mind concerning that those things which can stop us from being healthy or having the right mindset in the body of Christ. Now, the scripture that uh, I wanted to read, number one, was found in the book of Philippians, chapter number four, and verse number four. And it says, rejoice always in the Lord always. And he says, again, he says, I say rejoice. Let your, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. Oh, there's a mouthful right there. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And if you do that, he says in verse number seven, and the peace of God, hallelujah. Somebody say that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, what will it do? It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yes, yeah, so we're dealing with stress. We're dealing with uh, trusting God in chaos. We're dealing with gratitude and stress. We're dealing with uh, resting in God's promises. And we're dealing with finding peace in prayer. All of these aspects allow us to deal with stress in our lives. Uh, Minister White sang that song, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." Oh, glory to God, isn't it? And see, the words, just to take him at his word. Now we find that to be a problem at times. It sounds so simple. Just to take him at his word. Oh, so melodious, so sweet, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, until trouble comes, until stress comes, praise the Lord. And so we're dealing with stress in our lives and life's demands can be overwhelming. Say amen, somebody. Life's demands can leave us feeling like we are drowning in a sea of challenges. Yeah, because life's demands bring what? They bring pressure. Woo, how do you deal with pressure? Students know that pressure comes from being in school. People who work on jobs know that pressure comes from being on the jobs. In your family, there's pressure. In relationships, there's pressure. Personal expectations can create a perfect storm of stress in our lives. And as believers, we cannot navigate through these tumultuous waters alone because we have to turn to the anchor of our faith, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know we sing that song, like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. Yeah, we are that ship that's tossed and driven, and we are being battered by the cares of life. And then the song writer says, that my soul takes courage and says what? The Lord will make a way somehow. Yes, is that our testimony? When the storms of life are raging, 
and the billows, the waves, the ups and the downs and the bashings of life come against us. Oh, we, I'm talking to somebody right now because we all go through stuff. How do we handle the stuff? Amen. If you were sitting next to somebody, some of us are, you might ask the question to them, how do you deal with the stuff in your life? How do you deal with the shame? <laughs> you know, these songs, all these songs come about because somebody is experiencing things in their lives. And I'm asking the question, how do you deal with the stress? Hallelujah. In the chaos, in the chaos of life, the healthy church needs to learn how to deal with the chaos of life that we are constantly daily dealing with. The book of John in the 14th chapter, and you heard it so many times, and it is so apropos for where we are right now. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Wow. Now, the key to all of this, I believe, is the very first word. Let. And so that word tells me that I have something to do with this. It is my responsibility. It is our responsibility. It is your responsibility ability to let not glory to God your heart be troubled because stuff is going to come. Situations are going to come. Trials are going to come. Life is going to happen. And the question is, how do I deal with the chaos and the stress that life is going to bring my way? Will I let my heart be troubled? Because the word of God says, don't let your heart be troubled. Why is that? Because you believe in God. That's the key. Is my faith strong enough? Will I allow God to work in my life? Will I turn it over to him? Will I cast all my cares upon him? Will I do that? Can I do that? And if I don't, why not? So yeah, I'm trusting God in the chaos of life. The chaos of stress can make it challenging to see beyond our immediate circumstance. Aha, that's one of the keys there for the, when the enemy comes in like a flood. What am I going to do? Am I going to panic? Am I going to freeze? Am I going to freak out? Am I going to fall apart? Or will I gather myself and recognize what's going on and rely on the word of God that governs my life and say, hey, wait, wait, wait a minute here. I see what's happening, but the chaos of strife can come and it will try to make it challenging to see beyond the chaos. Tell somebody, see beyond the chaos because that's what stress is going to try to do to capture you and freeze you in the moment, have you fall apart. And as Christians, as believers, we are called to trust God in his sovereignty and believe that, listen to this, he is working all things together for my good. That's what it says in the book of Romans, chapter eight, verse number 28, the NIV says, and we know, yes, we know that all things God is working for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. He has purpose in your life. Chaos will come. Stress will come. Trying times will come. Temptations will come. Tribulation will come to try to knock you off course 
and to cause you to be stressful and to freak out, but you got to go back to the word of God, which you have hidden in your heart and say to the situation, I know that this is working for my good and I'm going to just trust God that he's doing this for my good. Oh, glory to God. We are encouraged to cast our anxieties where? Upon Jesus, recognizing that his shoulders are broad enough to bear the weight of our stress. How many believe that this evening? His shoulders are broad enough for the whole world. Glory to God. So it is crucial to anchor ourselves in the understanding again that God is sovereign. Now, there will be times where we may not comprehend the reasons beyond the struggles. Now, you don't understand it always that lead to our stress, but we can trust that God is in control and working all things for our good. What does the 23rd Psalm say? The Lord is my shepherd. Ah, I shall not want. Or the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Is that your confession? In the times of stress? Oh, the healthy church needs to think this way. We need to govern, as we say, when we uh, sometimes hear the announcements, uh, the reader of the announcements will say, uh, after you have heard the announcements, they say, govern yourselves accordingly. <laughs> that means that's what you that which you have heard, that which you have taken in, you will take everything you have heard and measure it to the programs in your life and govern yourself as to how you will integrate what you have heard in your daily life or your daily program. Well, you must integrate the word of God into your daily life program, when the stressful times come, the word of God has been integrated in your life. And for every stressful situation, there is a word from the Lord that will govern your life and bring a calm and a peace and a, 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 a aura about you that causes you to, to breathe, take a deep breath and say, yeah, I got this. Can you say that in your life? Yeah, I got this. I'm not going to freak out. There is, there is an antidote for this thing that has come upon me, and I will survive this. And then at the end of the week, you look back over your life and you say, thank God I made it through another week. How did you do that? Because you trusted in the Lord with all your heart. And you did not lean to your own understanding in all your ways. Yeah, there's a problem right there. Because many times we don't give God, we don't give him everything. We try to handle things ourselves. And that's where we mess up and we find ourselves in more of a stressful situation. And then we say, Lord, I'm going to finally turn this over to you. Resting in God's promises, yes, and gratitude in stressful times. Now, it may seem uh, counterintuitive to express gratitude during times of stress. In other words, how can I be thankful? How can I give God praise for this stuff that I'm going through? What is it? What's so grateful about uh, uh trials and tribulations coming on me and uh, at the, the times that I'm finding myself at in this situation. But we need to have a heart of thanksgiving. We sing the song all the time with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise. With a heart of thanksgiving, I'm going to do what? Bless thee, O Lord. Gratitude shifts our focus from what is causing stress to the many blessings that God has provided in our lives. When stress tries to come in your life, you can think back over your life and remember all the great things that God has done in your life. And I heard Todd Tribbett sing that song, if he did it before, 
He can do it again. Hallelujah. So when stress comes, you have to be grateful. You have to thank God for allowing you, even in that moment, even in that time, Lord, I'm grateful. We just sang that song Sunday in church. Amen. When Pastor Burton got up before you preached, I'm grateful for the things that you have done. I'm grateful for the victories we have won. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, you could go on and on. Yes, because that's how you deal with the stress in your life. God cares about me. He cares that I am his child. He promised me in his word. Hallelujah. There's nothing, there's no temptation that has come upon me that he won't make a way of escape in that trial that I might be able to bear it. Praise the Lord. This is how we deal with stress. This is how we deal with the stressors of life when they come against us, because all that stuff is going to come. My, don't we live in a stressful time? Don't we live in an age where things are constantly changing? There are fluctuations of life, ups and downs, peaks and valleys, spikes, amen, amen. But we have a regulator in our lives. We have the spirit of the living God living inside of us, he is a heart fixer, and he is a mind regulator. Oh, that's an old time stuff right there. But we find it to be so true in the day and time that we live in. You know, in the electrical world, as my time is winding up, there's a piece of equipment out on those poles as you ride up and down the street and you see it. And every time you look up and down, you'll see this big piece of equipment. And you may say to yourself, oh, what is that? I wonder what that does. And some of us know what transformers are. Some of us know what capacitor banks are. And then, but some of us may not know where, what regulators are. Hallelujah. Regulators. The next time you ride down the road and you get to, uh, in Cape May Courthouse and you get near the uh, post office. Yeah, I'm going to give you something to think about. And you get near the post office on Route 9, and right in front of the post office, there are these three big pieces of equipment sitting there on this platform, they call it, and it's called a regulator platform. Now the job of the regulator platform is to regulate, uh, you guessed it, voltage. So that piece of equipment is looking out over the line and it's looking at the power factor or how much voltage is going through that piece of equipment. So when it goes through that equipment, that voltage regulator is saying, okay, yeah, that voltage is stable, so I don't have to do anything. But there may come a time when the voltage is not stable and that voltage regulator bank will say, Oh, I see that the voltage is dipping below what we require it to be. So I'm going to boost the voltage to stabilize it so that those who are downstream of me in Mayville and Whitesboro and Irma, they will have stable voltage and they will not have their appliances in their houses uh, having a voltage drop and lights are dimming, and uh, things are not operating the way they should. Don't you know that the Spirit of God in our lives acts as a voltage regulator, and it improves our power factor, so when the stressors of life come upon us, and all these factors come against us to try to drain us, from operating at full capacity, glory to God, the voltage regulator called the Holy Ghost will boost us back up, amen, strengthen our lives and cause us to go about our daily operation at full capacity, hallelujah. I will not be stressed out because the spirit of God in my life will govern all those things coming against me and he will keep me regulated. Oh, glory to God. We praise God. Now, that's my lesson for tonight. But we're talking about stress. We're talking about dealing with chaos, trusting in God, finding peace in prayer, and resting on God's promises. Because why? We are the healthy church. 
and we are going to be on top. We are going to be the head and not the tail, above all and not beneath. God bless you tonight in Jesus' name. Now our closing prayer from Deacon Charles Carter. Heavenly Father, we just praise you and we glorify you, Lord, for the word that's come forth tonight. Lord, we need that regulation in our lives. We need you to um, just continue to allow us to rely on you. We need our hearts to be always focused on you when things come through. And just like the voltage regulator, you can change things instantly. And we just give you glory and honor and praise for making us a healthy church so that we can help others be where they should be and know about the Lord. Lord God, we just glorify your name. We just praise you. And we just give you thanks for who you are and for allowing us to be part of this whole situation. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I think Pastor Boone is trying to uh, get back on to close us out. But thank you, Deacon Carter, for that wonderful closing prayer. Brothers and sisters, amen. And as uh, Deacon Carter just said in his prayer, Jesus can instantly get us back to where we need to be. Hallelujah. Because he has that kind of power. What shall we do? Love ye one another. Love you one another. Love you one another. Love you one another. Love you one another.